I'll just wait, wait for it. Okay, wonderful. It's uh, all. Said. So, uh, if, if someone could uh, lead in prayer, we will continue. Uh, so, Ruba, are you? Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sister. Good morning, friend. Shall I pray, ma'am? Yes, yes, sister, please. Okay. Father God, we come to your throne of grace with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you for your mercies are new every morning in our lives, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness in our lives. Father, thank you, Master, for always being with us, guiding us, teaching us, comforting us, encouraging us, correcting us. It's to unlearn and learn the right things in the name of Jesus. We thank and praise you for our class, for our faculty, Pastor Nancy, Father, for teaching us this prophetic and Clearing us so many doubts and granting us a new understanding on this subject. Father God, empower us, Lord. Help us to be your faithful ministers and servants and your children, followers, wherever we are, Lord God. May your name be glorified through our lives. May our lives be a live, Father, pleasing sacrifice unto you, Lord. Thank you for this morning. Open our hearts to receive your word lord god strengthen us in your might in jesus name amen amen thank you amen amen thank you sister thank you so much um, so we are doing a couple of uh, chapters that are remaining in the uh, understanding the apostolic and so far we we have a good idea of what uh, the apostolic anointing looks like and what that can accomplish and who an apostle is and what the kind of apostolic leadership looks like. So in the last class, we touched on a church becoming more apostolic as compared to uh, only having a pastoral leadership. And we said that the Church of Antioch is a wonderful example where we see uh, teamwork taking place uh, and also you know as we look at the early church we see that people were uh, fathered they were uh, not just instructed but also mentored and led uh, to become leaders when i say become it it also has to do with the grace that god has given them the calling that each one of them have so basically facilitate whatever call of grace that god has put upon their life so there is an element of fathering uh, which is definitely there when someone pastors a church but when we talk about the apostolic you know it's at the next level uh, and uh, fathering makes a, a, a very you know it, it plays a crucial part in the way a church is led so we we looked at that we saw how a church can become more apostolic and the focus will also be uh, outward rather than just inward you know I, I told us that member care taking care of members yes all that is important but when we talk about the apostolic it uh, uh, together with that comes a pioneering spirit a spirit that wants to break through into new territory so there's an outward focus in the way things are done in a church setting or a church family okay yes so uh, that's something we saw and then we uh, saw how uh, the citywide church at the city level uh, to have apostolic leaders uh, and have them united and work for the cause of the um, uh, salvation of the city and breakthroughs in the city, transformation of the city, all that will take place when these leaders come together. Then uh, today uh, we will look at, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll just summarize. There are a few themes that are running through the next three chapters. Uh, so I'll summarize instead of going, you know, chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, instead of looking at it like that, so, sorry class um, for my frequent uh, uh, you know sneezing and things like that uh, I, I don't know it's just been way too dusty around where I live 
so mornings I, i'm just kind of trying to settle settle into it so anyway uh, so thank you for bearing with all this uh, so what i was saying is uh, uh, i there are uh, um, some themes that that run through the next few chapters so i'll just touch on those themes then that should give us uh, good clarity you know about the apostolic so the next three topics here have to do with um, developing and imparting the apostolic then uh, there is a uh, raising of apostolic churches and finally about the uh, practical issues concerning the apostolic ministry so uh, coming to the new uh, thoughts here uh, developing imparting the apostolic that basically talks about us understanding what the apostolic anointing carries and how it looks different from a pastoral leadership because if we don't recognize that when god is moving among us when god is raising up apostolic leaders we will not have an open heart to say yes to what god is doing okay so uh, we need an understanding a clear understanding of apostolic ministry apostolic calling uh, apostolic anointing so develop that understanding and also develop the understanding about the governmental authority that this uh, 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 you know this this uh, call as an apostle carries because the way a leader will lead Uh, especially an apostle will lead will be so so different from the way a pastor will lead a church so if i don't understand then you know i i might uh, think that you know someone is uh, just trying to do their own thing and uh, uh, you know never recognize that there is going to be a large impact of uh, at the apostolic way of uh, leading god's people okay Uh, so yes so just basically have this develop this understanding accommodate accommodate what god is doing through the apostolic anointing now uh, what we have uh, next over here is a uh, raising of apostolic church so in uh, raising apostolic churches there are some distinctive features which are talked about apostolic churches are pioneering in nature pioneering has to do with breaking new ground or taking new territory you know um entering places that nobody else has entered before so that's pioneering pioneering uh, so apostolic churches have that feature about them they do something new they enter a new place okay then building so uh, just um, uh, entering a new place is not sufficient but establishing a foundation and building upon it uh, so the apostolic as i told us you no know, you have paul who goes and he plants churches but he also comes back to ensure that the believers are growing well uh, uh, to see that um, uh, you know the leaders are appointed in the church so the overall health of the church growth of the church uh, and also at some point to see these believers go forward please give me a moment yes so uh that is those are the differentiating features now we could also say that when we look at the apostolic um uh, church there can be a process okay, which they follow uh, to establish the work of god so uh, even in one of the previous chapters i didn't look i didn't talk about it earlier but in chapter a uh, five year those stages are enlisted we have the territorial entrance we have pioneering stage building stage governing voice and apostolic base so there are five stages so the, there is also a process what is this process the process is as territorial entrance suggests uh, recognizing where god is leading us and making an entry into it um uh, and you know i i will not go into the details of this because we have discussed this earlier in the house of god uh, 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 course where we said that when someone is planting a church you know, to make that entrance will require spiritual preparation 
uh, on the part of the individuals, the team, as well as the place. So there's some amount of spiritual warfare that one needs to engage in in order to um, break through into that territory. So we might find that there are uh, apostolic teams and leaders that are taking extended periods of time in prayer. I recently, you know, uh, I had attended a, um, a church planting a conference, and in that conference, different pastors were sharing their experience, and uh, I still remember. Uh, something that was common in what they were saying is that amount of time each one took to pray through, uh, even after God showed them the place. There was one particular church who said that for an entire year, for an entire year, they only had prayer. They had worship. You know? And every Sunday there was nothing, nothing else which they did as a team. It was a small team, but they prayed and prayed and prayed because there is also the spiritual aspect of uh, 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 warfare and preparing ourselves, preparing the, the environment through prayer. So territorial entrance happens in, in this manner. Uh, and you know, I remember the pastor saying that he's, he's so enthusiastic about writing sermons and he already had you know, a whole bunch of sermons which could uh, he could carry on with that for uh, a couple of years, but then he had to uh, hold on and, and take up God's instruction and say, okay, you know, we will invest in prayer. We will invest in uh, um, worship. We will we will prepare ourselves. We will prepare uh, the territory. And then, you know, he began. And then he was sharing all the miracles that took place, how God connected uh, uh, this person to uh, someone totally unknown, but they had a beautiful space where uh, church could take take place the services could be conducted and you know in, in that way uh, so he kind of began to share all those stories and uh, this particular church is part of a movement remember I, i'm talking about the apostolic way of doing things and generally um, uh, apostolic has a movement so this was one church a part of uh, a network that has many 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 churches um, you know that follow uh, a, a similar way of doing things so it was an apostolic network actually so uh, territorial entrance that's how it, it it all begins you enter first and then you establish yourself there so uh, territorial entrance pioneering stage is you kind of prep based on the um uh, the uh opportunity or the environment that that uh, you see so prepare yourself in that manner uh and then you know you begin to build on it so when it comes to the building stage uh, there are many things that have to be put in place uh, so what what we need is when we're talking about apostles apostol apostolic networks um, we will need to uh, know you know who, who is leading and who is god working through so the apostles within the local church like they are uh, identified and they begin to father the the entire process then establishing of strong leadership and governmental responsibility within the local church. So strong leadership, obviously, remember we, we said a team uh, will, will come into the picture where many different people are doing uh, things uh, based on the calling of God on their lives and governmental responsibility. Governmental responsibility is to display strong authority, strong authority so that things are done uh, uh, according to the standards of God's word, then establish strong, strong doctrine within the local church. I think I've talked about this. The apostolic has this feature. You know, they're very clear about um, uh, the core beliefs and uh, uh, never uh, compromise on that. You remember uh, the the Jerusalem Council where they um, uh, where they literally fought with those who are coming up with a different doctrine about salvation. So the apostolic will establish strong doctrine, then establish order within the local church. Order within the local church is, uh, if you recall, we talked about the um, sacraments. We talked about the pulpit, um, you know, how things are done from the pulpit, the format of the church, uh, uh, many other processes that take place in the church, the leadership, uh, appointed correctly, you know, in a timely way, the right person in the right place at the right time. All this is a responsibility of the apostolic leaders. So they establish all this and develop new wineskin. New wineskin is nothing but 
uh, being open to a new structure and a new way of doing things uh, that God is leading them to. So even now, when you look at apostolic networks, there are a couple of uh, networks. Uh, I think I mentioned some, some, uh, uh, you know, some common ones that that you would find on 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 the net you could look up uh, calvary chapel you could look up new frontiers uh, association you could also look up um, uh, uh, recently you know, there's also uh, an evangelical uh, group it's that uh, redeemer city to city so these are all church planting movements that have uh, emerged um, and and you know you you kind of see a new way of doing things and you wonder hey so far people were not doing things like this but here are all these uh movements that are doing things in a different way the leaders look different the church formats look very different but that's the new wine skin you know as the lord um begins to uh uh, move them. They do things in a different way to accommodate what God is pouring up upon them. So these are um, some of the features during the building stage. Then, of course, there's a governing voice. Governing voice simply means gaining the kind of respect and honor and, um, uh, you know, being heard, being heard by uh, the people whom they are leading, as well as, you could say, the the uh, spiritual family in the city, uh, also the the officials, the governmental um, the structure in the city. So basically, God establishes uh, the apostolic with a voice. Okay, voice is like to be heard when you say something. Like you have the Jerusalem Council; they made a decree and they said, "Okay, uh, Gentiles do not have to be circumcised in order to be saved." Now that is it. Period, and people had to take it up seriously that's a, a governing voice that tells people what to do uh, and, and the apostolic carries that it becomes a, a, a governing voice of spiritual authority over the region and people take note of what is being spoken and said so you know it's uh, in other words it is incredible influence that god gives uh, the apostolic church and uh, you know the apostolic network of churches so god would do this uh, and um yeah and and this can this can translate into um uh, city transformation it can translate into social reforms it can translate into um uh, yeah, you know influencing um authorities local authorities civic authorities civic bodies around us um, uh, having a voice when it comes to policy making, so all these things. Okay, that's how the apostolic will influence. Then finally, stage five is apostolic base. Again, uh, Antioch is a beautiful example because the church grew, and after the church grew, what happened is all these people who had who had been fathered, the people who had been equipped and trained. So they were released to go and take up their own ministry. And you still had the leaders come back to this, uh, if you want to call it the original church, the Antioch church, and you know, bring back a report, fellowship, <coughs> excuse me, with the believers there uh, and, and uh, work together, continue to work together. So, uh, you know, apostolic base is, is like a technical way of putting it, but if you, there are some people who use the term like family, fa this is our uh, uh, church family that we come from. So we could be, like I'm just giving an example, I am from APC Bangalore, but you know, I could go to other parts of the nation and uh, do what God is calling me to do. I could um, uh, equip people and come back, or I can go plant churches and come back. Uh, I can go to other parts of the world and come back. But my base church, my apostolic base is APC Bangalore. Okay, so that, that is the way in which this works. So generally, when you look at um, the church movements, you would find that there was one particular church, you know, from where the leaders emerged. And they began to go all over the place and you know plant churches. But then eventually, you know, they do come back. They have their gatherings. Um, even if they've changed geographically, but there is a base uh, that they all refer back to. 
So this happens in the apostolic way of doing things. So there are some stages, as I pointed out, you have the territorial stage, you have the pioneering stage, which is starting off the initial work, then we said building, very important. So the apostolic work is set in order, it is set, uh, the doctrine is set very clearly for people to follow. Um, uh, so that, that would be our building stage. And once the building stage is done, governing voice or you know ha having a uh, um, having an authority and being heard is the governing voice stage uh, and then finally you know apostolic base where the work continues nothing has changed all of what we talked about so far is established it's in order and um, the work uh, continues but there is a there is a body that people can come back to a place of reference uh, and and you know um, uh, just you know reconnect refresh be charged up again and go back and continue god's work uh, that he has called them to do so this is how the, an apostolic way of doing things uh, in a local church will look like so it's very different you see it's very different so a normal local church is only used to coming listening to some sermons being equipped um uh, you they do engage you know go share with other people fulfill god's great commission but then when one is part of an apostolic church, uh, you would notice that there is a very notable outward focus. Okay, So in some way, everyone's required to contribute. Everyone's required to step up. Everyone's required to uh, you know, do something for God because all of us, all of us are the saints who have been called you know, to uh, work in the kingdom or serve in the kingdom. So an apostolic church will be like that so for um some people it can be very intense for some people it can be way too active you, know, you uh, people who are part of apostolic movements and churches might think hey you know there's i i don't have like a calm moment to just sit in peace because there's something or the other going on everyone's engaging uh, in, in reaching out to the nations and reaching out here and there and all of this so the challenges okay the challenges um, uh, with the apostolic way of doing things uh, can be that it can be very intense, okay? very intense. It can be very intense in spiritual things. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on the right doctrine and everyone has to grow spiritually and all that. Because if you're going to do something for God, you know, we have to be growing, we have to be constantly growing. So that it, it's all too intense. So some people may find it um, uh, intense. Uh, some people may find that the leadership is way too strong and way too focused. And it's like, you know, too much for, for them to take. Uh, the focus is uh, advancing the kingdom. So again, you know, one can't just come and just be there and not do anything for, for years. Initially, maybe that's possible. But eventually, uh, everybody needs to engage uh, in, in such an active uh, way of doing things. So uh, what can be some challenges? You know, people might feel um, uncared for. Uh, they might feel that, uh, you know, it's, it's always about doing something or it's always about, you know, some uh, agenda. <laughs> so like as a person, as a human being, like they feel that the kind of attention they need and the kind of time they need is not being given in the apostolic setup. So that can happen. That can happen. Now, uh, we know that some of us are wired naturally to be doers. So we know how to you know, run, get things done and be uh, ambitious about you know, God's kingdom and uh, advance the kingdom. So some of us are naturally like that. So it's a lot easier for us to tap into movements of this sort. But then some of us, just personality wise, you know, we may not be um, that geared to moving uh, at this pace. So for people like that, it can it can be quite uncomfortable. You know, they might feel left behind. They might feel like um, everyone else is going ahead and I'm, I'm so slow, um, uh, you know, or it could just be a season of somebody's life where uh, they, they are unable to, unable to cope up with the speed at which things are going on in the church, the apostolic church or in the apostolic movement. So 
now that we understand that these things can happen you know these challenges can occur as apostolic movements and churches you know we can uh, we can more intentionally care for people so that people don't feel that uh, that is not uh, important so in fact apostolic churches should take this all the more seriously and make sure that the people feel um, very loved and um, noted and um, that they belong to to what is happening and everything that god is doing through the church or the movement you know it's it's because of uh, all these people being part of that movement so apostolic churches need to um, uh, consider this this uh, challenge and compensate for it okay, so that's the way we we will improve now uh, another thing people feeling left behind so remember when we talked about mentoring uh, in the kingdom of god we said that mentoring a huge part of mentoring is to facilitate so we are here for people to journey through life uh, recognize their calling and do what god has called them to do not to dictate terms to people so even if you know uh, people are slower or people are taking time to uh, understand the grace of god over their life the gift of god where do they fit in um, right or they're just going through a tough season in their lives maybe there's somebody sick in the family and it's just taking a toll on the entire family maybe you know uh, they just got married or they just had a baby uh, so many things take place and and, and you know that can uh, uh, slow down their speed of doing ministry maybe they were doing they were really fast but uh, in in this season of life they want to focus on other things you know it's all fine so we must learn to accommodate we must learn to accommodate people accommodate their unique journey with god uh, and, and apostolic churches must be all the more intentional about doing this so praise god for all the good things that come with the apostolic but when apostolic churches are intentional about all these aspects you know it it can be a blessing okay so coming here to the last aspect in our notes uh uh it simply uh, says that uh because uh, apostolic churches are so intense uh, and generally they are um focused on one man generally they are focused on one man uh what can happen is that people can become very um you know give all their attention to that the leadership of that person it can become very uh, human centric at at the end of the day and that's a danger okay that's a danger uh, that uh, we we must perceive from you know before and and uh, not let that happen uh, and apostolic leaders tend also to be very strong so uh yeah. we we um we need leaders apostolic leaders who are also work, walking with humility so while training leaders you know, to kind of also emphasize on character on um, all these uh, right attitudes uh, becomes all the more important otherwise um there are you know movements apostolic movements that you can read about that have gone wrong because of uh, such strong leadership that went wrong okay so uh, these are all the pitfalls and dangers so ashikumar do you have a question would you like to unmute and ask uh, your question please yes pastor thank you uh, pastor my question is um, uh, like in the early churches um, when we read the epistles they were all under the covering of uh, apostle paul or apostle hello Yes, yes, carry on. Yeah. Um, so I just want to know that today it's very rare we see that any church is under any uh, any covering of an uh, of an apostolic covering. So I just want to know that is it necessary that that every church should be under the covering of an apostol or an ap apostolic covering should be there? Apostolic guidance is needed for every churches because. Um, if you see uh, the majority of the churches they are individually running uh, how the god is leading them so that is my question thank you pastor 
Yes, yes. Thank you, Shri Kumar. And a very pertinent question because um, recently a lot of people are asking about this apostolic covering. So apostolic covering, covering simply means having the uh, uh, having a strong apostolic leadership. So which means you know you probably have an apostle uh, and being led by that apostle in a, a spiritually getting our um, guidance inputs. Uh, and support from that uh, leader or leadership. Uh, so uh, what, what has happened uh, over the years is there are, uh, again, a lot of church movements where uh, some of the church movements are such that they have uh, church planters from within the movement. So you have people whom they have trained up who go and plant churches. So they automatically come under that apostolic covering. Covering is nothing but providing of uh, uh, direct leadership over the people. Uh, but then there are some movements where people have started out independent. So they are an independent church. They have their independent vision. Uh, but they want to associate or get connected to a governance or a leadership, apostolic leadership. So that is called as apostolic covering, coming under uh, uh, an apostolic covering. Uh, so from what we see in scripture, Shri Kumar, I don't think it is a, a prerequisite for a church to exist. A church can be independent. Uh, a church can uh, pursue the vision that God has given that particular church. And if they don't come under you know, apostolic leadership of some sort, it is perfectly fine. So people don't have to look for now, let's say I started a church. Okay, and I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm doing stuff independently. I need not come under an apostolic covering. I need not. Okay, But if it happens, or if God is moving upon my heart to come under some sort of an apostolic covering, that's fine. Now, if I, if uh, as a church, I don't come under apostolic covering. Do I miss out on anything? Is there something wrong with the way I'm doing my, my, my ministry? I don't think so. Because you don't see any prerequisite that everyone has to officially come under an apostolic covering. There is no such prerequisite. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, is that a follow-up to that? Yes, or yes, yes. Is yes, that yes, okay? Absolutely. Just that was my doubt actually. Thank you. Okay, okay. sure, Thanks. sure, sure. Yes, yes. Thank you, Shrikumar. All right. Uh, Kennedy, uh, you have something to ask? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. What I wanted to inquire is that there are cases where you've seen pastors having wow. ministries that have gone online and they also run uh -huh. CBOs, this community based organization. Would you consider the one to be apostolic? Okay. Yeah, good question. Yeah, thank you. So uh, you see, uh, that's why no, uh, Kennedy. I said we have to we have to look at the biblical features of the apostolic anointing, and that will help us decide whether a ministry is apostolic, whether a person is an apostle or a leader is an apostle. So just look look for the features. What are the features? Features are being able to pioneer something pioneer a move of god or you know pioneer um, uh, something something new in the way god is doing things so is that that can you can you vouch for that are they are they pioneering new things for god then we would also see if they're providing strong leadership are they providing strong leadership as far as the doctrine is concerned Mm, uh, do you see that they are fathers, they are effectively, efficiently able to raise up other leaders and not just raise up, mentor them, lead them, guide them such that you have many leaders under this apostle who are carrying out the work of God in their full potential, full capacity. So do you see that happening? Um, uh, do you, uh, what else? Do you see that uh, this person and the movement which they started, or you want to, if you don't want to use the term movement, that's okay. The church which they started, it has um, uh, received a lot of honor, respect um, socially. Uh, do you see that uh, they they spiritually 
have a voice among the citywide church where other pastors and leaders are able to um, connect, okay, connect uh, through relationship with this particular apostle or the church. And uh, it's, it's a, a mutually beneficial relationship. It is strengthening the, the, the body of Christ. And this leader, this church has a voice. So in what they say, they're in, able to influence the citywide church. Uh, and also they're able to influence the, the, the uh, you know, civic authorities. Uh, they have a voice at uh, the highest level, you could say the state level. Here in India, that's how we have it. We have the cities, we have the states, then we have the nation. So is it rising up uh, in a way to, to have that uh, uh, authority at the highest level? So observe all these things just because a ministry has multiple um, multiple locations, multiple activities, uh, multiple churches, right? Multiple. So just having many things going on, it's not apostolic. So if I if I am online and I also have CBOs, that's wonderful, but that's not necessarily apostolic. Okay. So that is how you distinguish. That is how you distinguish. So just being able to do a lot of things. Or let's say even me, if I have planted five churches in my lifetime, I'm not an apostle. I'm, I need not be an apostle. Maybe I've planted 10 churches in my lifetime. I need not be an apostle. I hope it answers your question, Kennedy. Yeah, I understand now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good, very good questions there. Any more? Any more? Uh, today is your last class, by the way. So if you have any questions, it'll be amazing to um, you know, get more clarity on, on this subject. Uh, sorry, sorry for coming back to you again. No, no, go ahead. Can you talk about the financial stewardship in these apostolic things? How is there a model of how to handle their finances? Uh, okay, yes, uh, Kennedy, very good uh, question again, because it's very practical. No? So if we are talking about church movements and all that. So if you look at the models that exist around us, each one has their own best, uh, they have their own best practices. Okay, so that way, I think uh, each movement can decide for itself uh, or themselves, they can decide as to what works for their setting. Um, so uh, I know of uh, some uh, organizations that that uh, um, that have churches, but initially for the churches to connect to those movements, they have to pay a fee to become a part of that apostolic movement. So I don't know, maybe that demonstrates their commitment or what, I don't know, but that's how they made it. So they collect a fee and then, uh, you know, they uh, as they work along with this uh, organization so they might give the name they give their name uh, let's say i am a church of hope uh, it's just an example i hope there is no church of uh, hope movement that you are aware of so uh, church of hope so uh, let's uh, kennedy wants to join me kennedy has to give me a fee and i give him my name so then uh, kennedy's church will be a church of hope from wherever he comes from then as i'm working with with uh, kennedy uh, you know, these networks also have a way of supporting. So then they will evaluate, they will see how the work is going on and they might recognize that Kennedy needs financial support. So they will enlist some pastors who will receive a support uh, for uh, a period of time, maybe up to two years. So each each network has their own cutoff, two years or something like that. Then uh, um, they will give you a support. They will you know, come up with that support and they'll give that to you. Then after that, you know, they would expect you to be self-sufficient by yourself. So by then, hopefully, you have a, uh, a reasonably um, good size uh, of co uh, congregation. And there is some income which you are able to generate through the tithes and offerings and the way you've managed your resources. So you know, after two years, they might just cut off. So you still carry the name Hope of God uh, Church, but uh, it's not uh, any financial uh, you know, uh, interactions, but it's more of 
you you go by our teachings uh, and uh, we are here to guide you lead you support you maybe you are going through opposition persecution we are there to support you and usually apostolic networks also tend to be more like a family so they have their conferences once a year they have their regional get togethers so there's a sense of hey i belong to this group i belong to uh, this network of churches so that, that's how they work so the financials work that way but then there are other uh networks where from uh, the get go they they will uh, work out a support and say okay come on we are going to pay you x amount of money just to support you um to to stand on your feet then uh, again they can either have a cut off or they, it could be indefinite they'll say okay this is the amount and we'll continue to give it to you throughout uh and you decide you know what what amount would be your salary from it or you know Uh, uh what amount would be um directed towards the ministry everything you decide but this is the amount we are giving you you should be able to run your ministry with this so that's how you know some of these churches do it so this is a way of um, uh you know financially helping uh churches under you now there can be some networks but but i i have not come across uh, you know this example where everything is done centrally centrally means Uh, all the money that comes in it goes into the head office of the apostolic network uh, and the expenses for the uh, connected churches comes through the head office but you see it's it's a law it um, practically that is challenging to do isn't it like every approval uh, every small amount of money so i i i have not seen any large networks which have this model where centrally the amount comes in and from there all the decisions are made and it is sent out to the people usually when there are uh, church plants and the church plants are in other parts of the country uh, a more independent way of working helps where a support amount is given and the local pastor there will you know he will he will run with that amount and maybe uh, report back on on the way he he is using those those finances so uh, yeah some details there for you can and i hope it uh, helps you Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, there are also some networks where there is a seed amount. They call it seed amount. Seed amount is to launch. So, um, you know, a church might want to have a um, a big inauguration or a, you know, like a launch, a launch party. <laughs> some churches call it. So, uh, the network will help. facilitate that so they they will give the money required to make that nice launch so that others come to know you the other pastors in the city come to know you so you know all these ways and i'm sure there are many models kennedy many models um uh, when it comes to uh, helping and and supporting the network of churches yes so any any other uh, questions thoughts comments Right. I hope I I'll see you in the next year everyone next semester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead Christopher, you have something to say. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can. Yeah, can you give us some examples yeah. of um of churches uh, or church in uh, that has its origins in in Bangalore as well as uh, uh -huh. you know in in India? Uh not necessarily mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, had that as a source of in Bangalore uh, or its origins in Bangalore. and uh, what is what what would be unique uh, in you know in the way they are uh, demonstrating that for uh, apostolic uh, uh, covering mm, okay okay sure uh, christopher okay in bangalore is it in bangalore mm, okay uh, i for one believe that apc is apostolic in its nature so that is one example for you um i have heard about the new frontier churches so they have you know they have churches not just um uh in in different cities so i uh, in bangalore also i i think so uh or maybe not in bangalore but uh, yeah so new frontier is is another one it's a U uk based uh, organization but they have churches all over the world um then vineyard vineyard is another movement which uh, 
you know, started uh, started out in the U.S. Uh, vineyard churches, you would have heard about that. And I think, yeah, there are uh, churches in Bangalore which are vineyard. They are connected to the vineyard movement. Mm, then. Uh, most recently, I think even uh, churches like New Life and all, you can say they are uh, uh, apostolic to Nixon. I, I don't know too much about uh, New Life Church, but I know there are lots of churches around the country which are called New Life. So, yeah, I think so. Uh, you could also look at networks like Assemblies of God. Uh, Assemblies of God uh, has many churches, but it it differs in in a in a sense you know, from what we were talking about because we we said there's you know a central leadership sort of you know an apostolic uh, voice. But when it comes to the Assemblies of God, I think they're all independent. They work as a network, uh, but if you Consider individual churches, their visions are very different. The way they do things is very different. Uh, so uh, churches are very different. So I, I don't know if um, uh, assembly, it's a network, yes, but does it come uh, under what we are saying as an apostolic church? I don't, I don't I still need to know a little more about assemblies of God. So that is another one. Recently, I heard about uh, some church uh, called uh, Crossroad. Crossroad, yeah crossroad or cross point uh, they also they also are into church planting they're into church planting so they have uh, one location in one part of the city they have another location uh, somewhere else so crossroad is also something that i came across um yeah Christopher, i think these these are the ones that uh, i i can share right now of my mind yeah you had another question attached to that what was something unique about them you know, that uh, that made them? What is unique about them? Uh, mm. Yeah. So the uniqueness about them is, as I told us. Um, uh, okay. Let me take for example, uh, vineyard. Okay. Uh, the unique thing about them was, see, it was started by this person called John Wimber. And John Wimber was uh, saved from an atheistic sort of a, a lifestyle. He uh, joined a church, but he discovered the gifts of the spirit. Okay? So he discovered the gifts of the spirit and he was very, very thrilled by it. And he felt a call to have churches that will practice the gifts of the spirit. So remember we said, uh, you know, apostolic leaders uh, and strong, strong doctrine, they build, they uh, put things in order and in place. So the way his teaching was, so all of the vineyard churches that got planted after that uh, were all churches that believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They, were, they believed in the working of miracles. They believed in the practice of the gifts of the spirit by every uh, you know, every uh, individual in the church. So the doctrine generally, uh, Christopher, tends to be common uh, among all the churches. So that would be the connecting factor uh, of the of these churches. So if you consider other churches, let's say a new life or a, a crossroad, different, different. Parts, if you go back to their co core uh, beliefs, that would be something unique. Or, or their emphasis, I, I should say, their emphasis on the doctrine will be something unique. Um, then the appointing of leadership. Each of these churches, the way they appoint leadership will be completely different. Uh, so some of them, they uh, will, will see uh, you know, uh, leaders grow up uh, among them and then they will decide, okay, you are, you are uh, good to uh, plant churches, now be part of an internship. So the way they appoint leaders will be something different. Network, you can observe that. Mm, uh, yeah, so I think these would be the, the two key things, uh, Christopher. The way of doing things and uh, the doctrine. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And I just realized we've run out of time. So uh, class, what I would say is the stream page on Google Classroom is still there. So if you have questions, you can continue to ask till the end of the uh, semester. But for now, we'll just wrap up the, the session. And uh, thank you so much for being such a, a, a 
curious and an inquisitive class you know i really love that about your class it makes me learn more uh, so thank you for that opportunity and i really hope that you know whatever you all have learned that uh, you you will be able to use it and see god work amazing th things through your life so uh, may god bless you abundantly let me pray and close uh, today's session let's pray together Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for this entire semester and the course on uh, the prophetic and the apostolic. Father God, thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you for all that you are teaching us, Lord. Father, I pray that you will help us, Lord, to be anchored to the truth, Lord, in in a in a very clear way, Father, that we would know um, distinctly, Lord, truth from error. And Father God, I pray that through what we have learned, that we will see, uh, oh God, uh, your work lord demonstrated through each one of our lives lord bless every single student in this course father bless their families bless their ministry and lord i pray that you will be exalted lord in and through all of us we thank you once again father we commit ourselves into your hands in jesus name we pray amen amen so god bless you class and thank you so much for being a part of this journey thank you thank you god bless you Thank you, Dr. Nasi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Say, God bless. God bless. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Kennedy. Yeah. Bye, Sirupa. God bless. Bye, Kennedy. Yeah. Thank you, Louis, Abhinash, Abhishek, Mangi. Samuel, Christopher, Shri Kumar. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.